Like number uh, number 180. What I want to show you all. <laughs> I won't. Good. Yeah. These are the 12 tribes. You are Benjamin Levi, you are Judah Benjamin Levi, and you are Ephraim, and the rest. You so called Latinos. And what I want to show you is that all of us, we are the same people. That's why you say you are black Sydney. Why? Because we are the Israel. Read that. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. Now the Bible says they, they assembled the whole nation together. Now they are declaring their pedigrees. They are declaring their lineage. Where they come from. And they declared their pedigrees after their families. Uh -huh. By the house. So after their families. So what made up the families? Are the families made up from the woman or the men? By the house. Of their fathers. So their fathers, where your father from, that's where you from. So his so-called millennials, his father is from the tribe of Benjamin. You are so-called Puerto Rican. Your father is from the tribe of Ephraim. Likewise for you. But if your father is from so-called Spaniards or Portuguese like the Caucasians, guess what? You are not from the tribe of tribes. Oh, you will not be part of the 12 tribes. Because the 12 tribes are made up of 12 different nations. They have one father. That's Jacob. So you got to come from that lineage for you to be called the children of God. Not everybody is the children of God. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Not everybody is the children of God. The children of God, they are 12 tribes. And today, they, we are not recognized as being the children of God. They call you Latinos. They call you West Indians, which means uh, uh, the West savages. Because Indians mean savages. So that's what they're calling you. A Latino is a made up word. But you are not Latinos. Now give me all the 28, 15. Goes. It's about time you wake up. I see you cannot even uh, keep your eyes closed. Are you okay? Or you work all night? Okay. And I'm gonna show you why you work overnight. That like you're so tired, you can barely stand. That's all part of the curses. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Mr. Come to pass. Now, that I will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, God is talking to the children of Israel, to the 12 tribes, so called blacks and Latinos. Okay? You are the children of God. God is talking to you. Because God gave us blessings and He gave us curses. And let me ask you a question. Would you say that the so called blacks and Latinos are cursed people today? Yeah. Where we live, do we live like we are blessed, we have everything? No, right? No. So if we are not blessed, we are cursed. Now read that again. I, I, I'm glad you said that. I'm going to show you that in the Bible, that the Bible said they were going to do that. Read. Deuteronomy 10, 28, says, 16. You have questions, sister? Please come. Please come to pass. Now this is what's going to happen. If thou not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments. So we were supposed to do God's commandments. His statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses to come upon thee and no take thee. Now, God says we will be cursed. Are you sure you're right, God? Um, let me ask you a question. I'm not, let me ask you a question. No offense to you, I'm not trying to uh, offend you or anything like that. Do you smoke? Okay. Cigarettes or do you smoke weed? Uh, you don't drink? Alright, uh, now the Bible says that we are going to be cursed. Now give me verse 37. Because she said something that they were not going to call us by our names. They were going to call us by other things, by other names. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. The Bible says we were going to become an astonishment. What is an astonishment? 
Amazing. Something that when you look at it, you gotta wonder how the hell did that happen? Wow! Exactly. A problem! A problem. What is a problem? Problem. It's a like a slick saying, something they used to describe something else. That's a problem. It's like a problem is like uh, uh, Latinos, you know, they, 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 they have a lot of children. A problem, right? You know? In the Bible! A Bible, that is a Bible. A Bible, like a Latino is a Bible. When they call you out of your name. When they call you wetbacks. Wetbacks. Yeah, that's a bad word. It's bad. You know, niggas, coons, Puerto Ricans. These are bad words because you are not Puerto Ricans. You are from the tribe of Ephraim. You understand? You are from the tribe of Ephraim. And Ephraim is one of the top tribes in the Bible. That's what you so call Puerto Ricans are. We are. So you can understand that you, you do, you marry, so, so you have children. So do you know what it takes to raise your children? What does it take to raise your children? Love, unconditional. What is love? Love, is, love? love is uh, knowledge, wisdom, not teaching not them not things that they want to talk. What is wisdom and knowledge? Guidance, uh, wisdom. What is wisdom and knowledge? Wisdom and knowledge. What is spirit? What is the world? What is the Taking them away and giving them guidance. This guy is in the in the Ah, let me show you what wisdom and knowledge is according to the Bible. Give me, uh, you know what I want? Give me uh, someone in that text and Malachi 27. Because we do need wisdom in this society. We need wisdom and we need knowledge. Because without wisdom and knowledge, guess what? Both of us, we all gonna die. And this is the wisdom and knowledge that you need. Psalm 11 and 10. Psalms chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you, are, when you fear God, that's when you start to become wise. Because you, you know you're, gonna, you're not going to do things to destroy, to make God angry against you. So God won't destroy you. You know? A good understanding. Now, a good understanding. That you are there. That you is commandment. So when you do God's commandment, that's when you're going to become wise. That's when you have wisdom, Malachi 2 and 7. Now, this is knowledge. Malachi 2 and 7. Now, you need knowledge. Because I know you say you're tired, right? You're making a lot of work I see you back, 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 and forth. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. For the priest lives to keep knowledge. So, Bible says, you listening? That the priest should teach you knowledge. Now, what is the knowledge? Read. And they should seek the Lord at his mouth. So what is the knowledge? So the laws of God is the knowledge that you need to have. God's laws is the knowledge that you need. Now, this is the truth for the one in five. So if you are going to teach your son, you have sons and daughters? So if you have sons, you must be able to teach your son how to be a man. Alright? And I'm going to show you what it means to be a man according to the Bible. Read that quick. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 4. They shall not make fullness upon their head. Now the Bible says you cannot bore your head. You have your head on your head. Alright? Be careful, brother. Keep your body. Neither shall they save more the corner of their beard. Now, one of the laws that you must keep is that you cannot shave your beard. As a, as a man of God, as a son of God, you cannot shave your beard. Look at all the men you see here. They all have beards. Why? Because you don't want to look like your wife. You don't want to look soft. Like the lion have his mane, or Israelite men must have his beard. So you must let your beard grow. 
So when you have your sons, when he grows up, you gotta teach him that he's a man. He must keep his beard. Give me the Bible to teach you about the beard. Oh, the beard. Everybody, everybody else get it. Is it true that you're supposed to shave your armpits as a man? As men, no. There's no law that says you must shave your armpits. Women do it because of my job, but not for men. Okay? So, that's one law. You must keep your beard. Did you hear what I said? So, you gotta keep your beard. Now, in other words, you put it on, put it on fire. Because if you are going to teach your son, you got to teach your son how to be a man. And what he's going to, when he grows up, what type of woman? Let me show you about the beard. Read that. This is from the Compact Bible Zondervan Dictionary. Beard! Now, this is talking about the beard. Why you must keep your beard? You shave your beard. Beard! A badge of manly dignity. What? A badge of manly dignity. So when you call yourself a man, it's a badge. That's what differentiates you from your woman. So you gotta keep your beard. So you gotta grow your beard. So read that again. You got to go back. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 4. Now I just give you a law, and I'm giving you a law, a law for your wife. That's what you must teach your wife. The woman. Now the Bible says the Israelite woman. So that's the sister. So now wear that which pertains unto a man. Now the Bible says a woman cannot wear what belongs to a man. What belongs to a woman that women wear? What? Pants, boots, combat boots. So God says, as a, your wife cannot wear the same thing you wear. So when we say, who wear the pants in your relationship? Your wife cannot be wearing the pants. Why? Read that. Be a leader to a man, put on a woman's garment. Likewise, you cannot wear a shirt or penny hose or high heels. So, therefore, your wife cannot wear pants either. So, your wife wearing pants or spandex, that's against God's laws. I'm glad you said that. So, that's what I'm saying. That's what it means to you. Homosexuality is what it means to you. Exactly. Because a lot of old people today, they are in lesbianism and homosexuality because why? Because of the way they dress. That dress put a manly spirit on the woman. And, the, and when the man wear high hairs, it's put a woman's spirit on, on, on him. Read that. Sarah, 19, verse 29. Amen. Baby, no. By his look. So when you look at a man, you should be able to see that's a man. I, I do not have to guess to see is that a woman, is that a man? So a man may be known by the way you look at him. You say, oh, that's a man. Three, and one, you have understanding by his continent. So one, one who has understanding, you can say, ah, oh, this brother has understanding. When I look at him, if I look at this brother in the back, as this brother looks like he has understanding. Or else, if he does not have understanding, I will know. By looking at him. And when you have understanding by his continent, uh -huh. when thou meetest him. So when I meet you, I should be able to tell whether you have understanding or not. Just by looking at you, by looking at your wife. Now, here's what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to this. A man's attire. A man's attire. The way you dress. And excessive laughter. Excessive laughter. And gay. And gay. The way you walk. To what he is. Show what he is. So when you see a homosexual, you can tell. So likewise, when you see your wife, you cannot do but Stay away, but Stay away. Keep your mind up. When you see your wife, if I see your wife, if you have understanding, I must see it through your wife. And what I'm telling you right now, you guys lack understanding. You need to repent and get the true knowledge of God. You see what I'm saying to you? Because your wife cannot be dressed the way she does. Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. 
subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.